It has been the norm on the internet for as long as I can remember to clown on YouTubers if they decide to dabble in music. Much like myself when I learned that Lil Mane was doing a part 2 to his female commentators video, the general reaction when a YouTuber decides to produce music is, oh shit, here we go again. Generally, people are told to stick to what they're good at and to not ever leave their comfort zone or pursue anything different because that would be weird and it would upset the natural order. As if Mr Beast dropping a song has the power to tilt the earth off its axis, messing up the world's equilibrium and starting a butterfly effect that leads to the end of human life. Not that I would complain if that was to happen. I really do not want to write my dissertation. And yet again we see this happening with Corpse and his music and more recently with Dream and the song that he's just released. Now in this video I'm going to go over maybe the reasons why people do criticise YouTuber music and then offer some actual objective and subjective criticism to both Corpse and Dream. Because um, I am a bit of a musician myself, a hundred people on Twitter think I can write music, I play guitar, bass and piano and I have an A-level in music so um move over James Murray I'm clearly more qualified to do this series. Now there are various reasons that you could ponder on as to why this is the way that people generally react to YouTubers music. As let's be fair I'm sure every musician gets their own fair share of criticism as taste in music is completely subjective. However you don't see James Marriott starting a series about top 10 UK artists not being able to sing. Maybe because punching up is something Thing that UK YouTubers are too pussy to attempt, so they're more likely to clown on someone that's already being clowned on, and when that fails and they need an ego boost on their Sunday evening, they decide to punch down onto smaller creators. Good use of your platform there! Would you like a gold star? Because let's be honest, with that attitude, it's gonna take you a while to get your golden plaque, so I stick with the golden star sticker. Maybe that will help your ego. Don't worry though, their audiences will definitely forgive them for being hypocritical and hypocritical bastards when they decide to post Instagram stories about preaching kindness and positivity. Oh, the irony. Sometimes YouTubers' music is genuinely quite good, depending on your taste of music, that is. With James releasing his EP, even if you don't particularly like that style of music, even if you don't like the themes that he explores, or even if you just don't like the sound of his voice, you can appreciate the effort that went into it, the fact that he can actually sing in tune, and the fact that it was well produced. And that's genuinely the consensus when it comes to chart singers too, especially chart singers that have come from YouTube, like KSI. The music itself must be somewhat good to have ranked so highly in a chart. So although there will be hate for this kind of music, its place in the charts is more likely to give an accurate depiction of how good the music actually is, rather than the words of a commentator who just preferred Hesky time. Also, criticism of YouTubers' music can actually be driven by the fact that their music is heavily carried by their fans. Most commentary YouTubers hate stands and find the excitement that stands get over their favourite creator breathing extremely annoying. Forget the excitement that they get when they produce a song. Because of this stan versus anti-stan mentality that we see on Twitter all of the time, you're more likely to get exposed to people actually talking about how great this music is or how bad it is online. YouTubers are trending topics and therefore so are their songs, so it makes sense to talk about them on YouTube. That's literally the reason why I'm making this video. Because commentary YouTubers know that talking about YouTubers music will get a lot of interaction from that YouTuber stan base, they often get hypercritical in order to get more clicks. Either that or out of jealousy because they don't have the balls to post something different than a 10 minute video on the next TikTok trend. Therefore, usually the response to creators when they release music is either overly positive or overly negative. The overly positive response is usually dubbed as stans being too blinded by their love for the creator. And the overly negative response is usually dubbed as people that are just too jealous and they are blinded by their hatred of that creator. And therefore, all of this criticism is usually coming from a biased standpoint. Saying, I don't particularly like this style of music, but I appreciate it, is not going to get you clicks or interaction. Shot myself in the foot in this video then, haven't I? And so, Dream's music and Corpse's music is likely to have faced that much criticism 
for this reason. However, it's rarely considered how problematic critiquing music can actually be. Like with the content that you watch on YouTube, music taste is completely subjective. Personally, I'm a fan of 2000s post-hardcore and emo-like music such as My Chemical Romance and Pierce the Veil. I listen to pop punk like All Time Low and Avril Lavigne, and I do like the more modern takes on alternative rock and indie like Oliver Tree. But just because that is the style of music that I tend to listen to, that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate a good song song by Stormzy, Frank Ocean, Miley Cyrus, or even Ariana Grande. But when it comes to critiquing YouTubers and their music, a lot of commentators don't seem to consider their personal bias and their taste in music, and how that then influences their opinions on YouTuber music. And so the criticism actually ends up being more subjective than objective, even though you can objectively criticise it and point out the good and bad things that actually affect the quality of the song without it coming down to your personal taste. A lot of people think that because they don't like something that means it must not be good and that it shouldn't be enjoyed and that is fine and you're entitled to that opinion but you thinking that a song is good or bad doesn't make it objectively good or bad and I feel like the only things you can really use to measure the objectively good or bad aspects of a song are things like the quality of the music which is depending on whether it's in time or in tune the unique or complexity of the music such as its use of instrumentation musical features and structure and finally lyrically it can be dubbed as simple and complex depending on the type of language that's used whether that's literal or metaphorical or semantic fields or other literary techniques that you would probably understand if you paid attention in your English class. Obviously this isn't an extensive list however I believe that is usually what people approach when they're coming to talking about how music is good objectively or at least it's more of an analysis that proves why they have their subjective opinion. And considering some commentators reckon they are analytically talented it would be nice if they actually offered objective criticism to music or at least backed their subjective opinion with music theory and analysis rather than just going I don't like Dream because Dream is boring and I don't like his song like a fucking robot regurgitating the same circle jerk opinions of the commentary mafia. Take Corpse for example. The other day I saw that someone was saying that he used depression as a personality trait, that his lyrics were bad, that his music taste was bad, that his style was bad and his voice was bad. When if you look objectively at one of his songs like Agoraphobic for example you will realise that the rap is in time and is rhythmically pleasing, the actual music is in tune and he actually uses some quite unique unique and complex chords. He actually uses some minor 7th and major 7th chords, some minor 9th chords, an A13, an E13 and an augmented chord. For those of you who don't do music and probably don't even know what a chord is, the things that I've mentioned are basically extended or rearranged or more complex versions of the basic chords that you find in music. And sometimes these can be extremely difficult to play on an instrument like a guitar or even on a piano depending on how many notes are in that chord. These chords aren't frequently used which actually adds an objectively unique quality to Corpse's music. And the chord pattern isn't even a generic one either. Also, subjectively, the chords that he uses are just really fucking pretty. I didn't just, I didn't just um, freak out over music chords, I swear I have a life. When you look at Corpse's voice or his lyrics, that is when more subjective analysis comes in. I feel like the only thing you can objectively criticise is the quality of the rhymes in his lyrics, however there is no rule that for a song to be good the lyrics must rhyme, and a rhyming pattern doesn't depict how good a song is, that is completely down to you and what you think a song should sound like. The same with literary techniques for example, for some the use of the metaphor date with death actually is effective in portraying a feeling of hopelessness or inevitability of death. Others might not actually think that deep into it or put any focus on the language whatsoever. And with the voice, it all just comes down to the sound that you like. I personally like that emo sounding boy voice. Some people really don't like it, but that doesn't mean that it's either good nor bad. The music that Corpse actually is pursuing is quite expressive and focuses on dark feelings surrounding mental health. And music in itself is a form of expression of our own emotion and our own experiences and you will often relate lyrics that you hear to your own experiences even if an artist has written it with a completely different experience in mind. So subjectively criticising someone for talking about mental health in their music when 
music is a form of expression and emotion for some people, it's just not a strong enough argument to dub someone's music as complete trash. And so in the same logic, it's not fair to use the sweeping statement that Corpse's music is only good because he has devoted fans. Although that is probably the reason why it's gotten the recognition that it has so easily and so quickly, music usually does well because people relate to it and like it. And it's pretty plausible that people will relate to feelings of depression, anxiety, inadequacy, violation of privacy, and not being okay, especially during a pandemic when mental health is worse. Corpse's fame might have given him a leg up, and yes, the sensationalism of a creator is more likely going to make more people listen to their music. But the fact that the music is in tune, in time, uses interesting chords and chord patterns, and explores themes that are relatable are more likely the reason why people genuinely like his music. But if you simply just don't like his voice, something that he cannot change, then you just don't need to listen to the song. There is little point actually critiquing the sound of his voice. That doesn't mean you have to like Corpse's music either, by the way, but shitting on it because you don't like it isn't strong criticism. At least offer some reasoning behind your subjective opinion, otherwise you're just blindly hating on it. Subjectively, I really like the sound of the music and the lyrics are relatable. However, the lack of structure with no reoccurring chorus does leave something to be desired for me. And although the outro does have a very nice sound and could be seen as a very nice contrast, compared to the complexity of the lyrics in the verse, simply singing I'm not okay over and over is a very, very stark and dramatic change. I don't know though, maybe that is effective to some people because it sombers out the song after being hit with a load of information in the verse. But that's just my subjective opinion, which is actually quite ironic because one of my favorite songs by um, My Chemical Romance consists of the lyrics, I'm not okay, over and over again. The majority of the criticism to Dream's song has been in the similar vein. I don't like his voice, it's not for me, or anybody would sound good with that much money producing the song. But genuinely, I don't think the song is that bad. I've listened to it a few times and it's been stuck in my head for days, so he must have done something, right? Obviously I can't play the song because copyright, however, off the bat, the song is in tune and the chords are quite simple. I think some minor sevenths might have been used, however, generally, the chords seem just to be very, very basic. Although the song is in tune, there are a lot of effects being used on the vocals. Obviously, all music is touched up and edited to a degree, as are videos and photos and everything that we consume that is media. And I do think that that overly edited vibe is what they were probably going for, however, because the vocal are edited to that extent, it's difficult to measure whether it's actually in tune because Dream can sing or it's in tune because of special effects. However, from the ear, he does have quite a chain smoker, sad boy band voice, which definitely fits well with the vibe that he's going for. When you look at the lyrics, a semantic field is established due to a lexical set of words that relate to each other. For those of you who had no idea what I just said because you don't pay attention in English, in layman's terms, he has used words that are tied to the same theme to create a theme. The theme that he seems to be focusing in on is travelling and roads and driving with the lyrics such as foot on the brake, at the light I don't notice, I sit and wait until the next song, 20 hours in an old van, drove 20 hours and the use of the word interstate. And maybe even the use of the word paved because you pave a road and interstate is like a road. When you look at Genius's response and Dreams' responses to these questions, this is down to travelling that he had to do to see a partner. So they are all literal and figments of true experiences, rather than just being metaphorical. However, the focus on this memory is somewhat effective, as it does convey the story quite well, and it does really link the pre-chorus and the chorus thematically, as well as establishing a sense of imagery. I should have gotten an A in English literature! Other than this though, Dream's lyrics seem to be quite simple. One of the only major pieces of criticism that I could give it is its rhythm. There are a few times where words are either squashed in or stretched out to fit them into a music bar. For example, in the pre-chorus, the drove 20 hours is a squash of words. It does work rhythmically and again, it depends what you like when it comes to rhythm and smoothness of lyrics that you sing. However, 
it also leaves you no room to breathe as a singer. So technically, it's quite complex, which I'm going to demonstrate now with a live rendition. 20 hours in an old van up the east coast through the cold wind Draw 20 hours by the ocean up the east coast what a road trip all right all right no need for that some of us don't have money or auto-tune sadly but that was very nitpicky the melody in itself is very simple making it catchy and the rhythm could use some improvement in my subjective opinion the range of notes that are used are quite slim however that doesn't make it good or bad and probably aids in it actually being as catchy as it is thematically most of the lyrics work to paint a picture and you can link them together in some shape or form so i guess all in all disliking the song comes down to whether you personally like the lyrics or the style or the sound Subjectively, I think Dream's voice actually suits the genre of the song quite well. However, I don't like the overuse of effects, which is something that would deter me from playing the song on repeat. The chords used are basic, but it's not the most basic chord pattern out there, which is not something that I can really criticise as that would be expected of most songs. The lyrics are also very basic, and although I did say that they mostly work thematically, the lyrics, people change like the tide in the ocean, at least I think, or am I dead wrong, do seem out of place. With all this focus on driving to see a partner, that road then being paved with the memories of when you were together and how that makes you reminisce on your relationship. Although people changing kind of fits with the theme of breaking up, with a clear semantic field established, that metaphor does stick out quite harshly because unlike all the other lines in your song, it doesn't have an obviously strong relation. It does link to a wider theme of past relationships, however, it seems out of touch when 90% of the other lyrics have a stronger focus on one element of a subject that is explored in the song. So to conclude, Dreams and Corpse's music isn't actually that bad. Both have nice elements in them and both have places where they could probably improve. Obviously a lot of what I've brought up is either subjective or based on music theory but inevitably a fan base decides whether something is worth listening to, not a commentary YouTuber. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please subscribe. We're so close to 2k and I'd really like to hit that by the end of February. Please leave a like and a comment and give me your opinions on what I've mentioned. Follow my socials which will be linked in the description especially my twitter where i do actually post my own stuff and you can count on me on there if you want please don't i'm incredibly insecure i'm gonna go and write some more songs about my hatred of social media and with that i'll see you soon